I was looking at these three. I like the silhouette of the Eagle Warrior. Uh, it, that's a canvas and it, it actually, uh, I made a painting from it. And then I have the Quetzal and there's a cheetah, you know, but I was hoping to find a cheetah that was running. I found these images in a stack of papers that I had. Okay, so you need something that you want to draw. You need to find a picture. You need to be able to go into it and see how I gridded it. I marked it up, okay? Uh, this black line, that is uh, more or less the how I want this, this uh, cheetah to fit into uh, a piece of paper or canvas, whatever space I'm going to put it into. I'm going to transfer a drawing into another space, okay? And that black line, that's what that is. And the rest of this is broken up into quarters. If you look at it, you know, it's cut in, in half down and half across. And then uh, this half I cut in half again. And then that quarter I cut in quarters again. And that quarter I cut it in quarters again. And the reason I cut this one really detailed was because that's where the face is. And so I need to know where each every little every little uh detail of his face because the face is what throws us off right and we got to get real tight with our grid when there the rest of the body phew, you know it's just kind of flows right if you're off a little bit it's no big deal okay uh but this time i'm gonna do this guy this little hummingbird i found some uh acrylic drawing pins that I used on another project I don't have all the colors I would like uh, but at first I'm gonna lay it down with a pencil and I got an eraser and, and I got a blank paper okay so I'm gonna grid it I'm using the tape measure um, I couldn't find I couldn't find a ruler okay so I can use this Okay, I'll get back to you. Okay, I'm working on the uh, gridding the paper. I have gridded the uh, hummingbird. You look at it real close, okay? The paper, this one is a little bit smaller uh, than my drawing paper, so it's going to be a little bit bigger. Just a little bit though, okay? I think this is, uh, what is this one? This one is 11 inches, and the drawing paper, I believe, is 12 inches, okay? And so what I've done is I've marked off uh, the grid uh, every inch, okay? Every inch I put a mark with the pencil. Now, when you put your lines on your drawing paper, the surface that you're going to go on, if you're going to draw it or if you're going to use watercolor, um, something like that, you need to draw very lightly, very lightly. Okay, let me show you something. Apenas, barely, barely put your line down. If you put it down real hard and then you go to erase, uh, it's not, most of the time it will not come out. Something I forgot to mention too, uh, instead of, if you erase, don't use your hand, use a brush. This is an artist brush, okay? Uh, if you don't have an artist brush, you know, I have one because I'm an artist. Uh, but you can use a paintbrush too, any kind, as long as it hasn't been used, the, the uh, fibers are soft, okay? Uh, so maybe you need to practice a little bit okay making lines move your hand move your hand you know practice lightly as light as you can so the only one that needs to see it is you you should let your hand just slide over that paper okay over and over and over all right see how light i got it got you can barely see it okay so on your on your drawing this one, uh, I make it dark because, especially where you have color, dark colors, you got to be able to see where the line goes, okay? It might be a critical point. It may not, all right? 
So, okay, I want to point out two things, okay? I, I completed the grid on my drawing paper, and I also numbered it, okay? All the way across on both of them, okay? And not just on top, but I also came down the edges and across the bottom, okay? And then on the other side. And on the left and right side, I uh, started from the top and marked it down. I did the same thing on the right side. I started at the top, marked it down, and I'm left-handed, so I started at the top left and went across, okay? So the bottom, also I started at the bottom left and took it across, okay? If you start on the opposite side, top, bottom, it's gonna throw it off, especially if the paper's, are, you know, a little, you know, odd size or something, or a canvas. So if you start from the top going to the left, down the left, you start from the top going down the right. Also, the top from left to right and the bottom from left to right. It's got to be exact. And uh, uh, otherwise, it's going to throw you off. Okay. Notice uh, I did a little extra grid freehand. The eye of the hummingbird and the beak of the hummingbird. Okay, these two, these two areas, all right. Uh, beak is right in that little corner. Okay, notice over here, there's the eye, you know, there's the, the beak. Okay, notice number six up here. Okay, number six. So it's one, two, third square down. Okay, number six. One, two, third square down, number three. Okay, that's how I find out where something goes. The numbers uh, that you put on the edge of the paper, whether it's top, bottom, left, or right. Okay, so I showed you where I've broken it down. Some of these little squares, I have broken them up in quarters. The, around the eye, the the where the beak comes out, the uh, the foot is going to come out of this area uh, right in here, and then there's another foot right down in here. So uh, you can see it over there on the on the picture. Okay. So this process uh, of transferring your image, transferring, okay, that means moving it from one space to another. Here I'm going one inch to one inch, okay? But when I do a mural, I uh, I actually uh, do it uh, one foot. One foot equals one inch on paper, okay? So I see a little square right in here. You know, uh, and then of course the that claw comes around, and you got the little claw. Remember these these guys got little claws, and I think that's what this guy is right here too. It's a little claw, and then this guy you see a part of that little toe, and that claw comes out something like that. Okay, so there's that one. And then the other one, I only see two, okay, and it is, it is right about in here, and I, it's blurry, so I'm just kind of imagining it, okay, your toe, the little claw coming out right there. And then this guy <clears throat> comes out of the side of this guy and 
pushes out. Okay, something like that. And you can see the claw coming out of that toe. And boom. All right. So I got the eye in where the beak comes out. And of course, I was able to place it into where the, the area where the, where the, where the beak uh, comes in. And <clears throat> okay, so now your assignment is, and I showed you how the references work, right? <clears throat> you know, draw it in lightly until you are sure. And you should have practiced, you should have practiced drawing light lines, okay? Drawing light lines. You got to get in the habit of doing that. So that's your task, okay? And um, uh, and uh, once you get that done, uh, you got to go back and check on what you've done, okay? You got to go back every once in a while. And it doesn't quite have to be exact, okay? But uh, you keep it going. And uh, and uh, and then once we once we have it all pretty much done, we'll be back in touch. Okay. Happy drawing. <clears throat> okay. Your next step. Don't forget your brush. Your next step. Once you got your drawing in, is to go in and start erasing your lines and the numbers okay remember don't use your hand use a use a brush where you where you whenever possible i like these little uh these little uh, erasers i got a whole bunch okay i got these guys and i try and keep them sharp you know so that i can get down in there in between the lines if you erase any of your lines make sure make sure to put them back in okay and some of them you're going to erase so, so don't worry about it okay try and get as much a little details in the branch here i put some uh, a few lines where there's lights and darks uh, just so that i know where where it's going to go and you want to get these lines out the best you can okay so you got to do your whole your whole drawing and uh clean it up good okay so i got most of the left side a few lines here and there you know just go back into them uh, Notice how I lay my eraser flat so I can get that uh, that edge of that eraser uh, in between the drawing itself. Okay. And you will erase them. But uh, you just keep going on it. Clean it up. Remember, you can stop this if you need to catch up. You can stop this and... Uh, Pause it, catch up, and then get, you know, start it up again, okay? And here's the uh, original photograph. You know, you can, if your folks have a, a, a printer at home, you can go to uh, Google Images. Put in there whatever you want. You want to draw a buffalo, an eagle, a, a swan, a, a mallard, a cheetah. Uh, Jaguar, whatever you want, you know, and then you can print it out, grid it, remember? So this lesson was about gridding and transferring images, okay? So, so your next step on this one would be color. What do you want to color it with, you know? You can do color pencils, Crayola markers, um, watercolor if the if the paper is strong enough this one's a little too thin or acrylic markers you know it's all up to you okay 
Okay, my friends. I'm going to put color into this drawing. And I have these uh, acrylic pens that's, that uh, I'm learning to work with. And I have these Crayola markers, a set of 12. What I like about these Crayola markers is that uh, there's a color here. They, they call this, uh, what is this? Uh, sandy tan, okay? And uh, I, I end up using that color a lot. Crayola markers, hey, you can get these at CVS, uh, uh, Target, uh, most any places, grocery stores, you know, you go into the pencil pen area. And uh, there's a lot of things you can do with them. Uh, one of the things that, that I like doing with them, uh, and, and you should experiment. You see these marks right here? You should experiment a little bit. Uh, you can get a nice uh, uh, pointed line. You know, uh, for detail work, or you want to fill in space, lay it to the side, set it down, and pull. Okay, set it down and pull. Nice wide. The thing about Crayola markers, though, if you're, for instance, like the head of the bird right there, everything radiates from the eyes out. In front of the eye, toward the beak, it, it moves toward the front. And then as you come up, as you come up, it starts to move forward and up, okay? And then back here, it starts to come back. So all your strokes, when you're coloring, you need to follow the direction of the of the plumes. The body, all these feathers go down. So you gotta go down, okay? When you color, whatever color you're working with. Of course, the branch, you're gonna follow it up and down, up and down, okay? Uh, because that's a, that's the shape of it, that's the form of it, and if you go contrary to it, against it, it just doesn't work, okay? It looks like a bunch of scribble. So I'm going to start with the uh, yellow, because it's the lightest color. That's the thing about markers, okay? You want to start with the lightest colors, uh, because once you put down the dark ones, especially black, there's no change in it, okay? Okay, fíjense que uh, I look at the at the drawing. Uh, here I'm putting in a uh, yellow. I've laid yellow in. This uh, I'm working with markers, okay? If if I was doing watercolor, I could make the tones a little bit softer. But uh, Crayola markers is a little bit uh, stronger, harsher uh, color. Once it goes down, it's pretty much there. But I work with the yellows uh, so that uh, I can always put another color over it, especially like up here in the head. I, I, uh, I drop the yellows in and follow the shoulder down a little bit here. I'm pulling down, okay? And when I get to the branch here, I pull up, okay? A little bit of technique. Uh, I see some yellow under the green here, so I'm going to put some in there, okay? And then I'll come back with the next color, which is a green. And if I had two greens, it would be nice. You know, sometimes you got a light green and a, and a dark green. But, um, okay, so you want to take it up right here. I want to start coming up. I'm using the little point, working my way back, okay? I'm going to work it a little bit, and then I'll show you what I got, all right? Okay, I noticed uh, the uh, the oranges, especially these, uh, these fluffs right under his uh, beak, kind of a bright uh, orange. So I'm laying yellow underneath okay notice how I lay it down I pull and then on the tips so that I get a nice finer line uh, 
I, I did go into it with some grays and I, and I wanted to show you something too, okay? Lines, lines with your grays. You got, you got to, uh, using the tip, fluffs, uh, penitas, you're just barely touching. You're just barely touching the uh, paper. You know, I can't even feel it. I just, nice thin line that does the, the, uh, the uh, softer you touch it, the, the finer, the softer the line, okay? You got to remember that. You got to practice some of these things too, okay? Just to, uh, so I got the yellow in the beak. Uh, there's orange underneath the beak here. I said this uh, acrylic markers, uh, acrylic markers, uh, Crayola markers are a little bit stronger. You can leave some yellow showing through. Uh, remember to come from this other side. Right over the gray. See those lines? Just laying that color in there, okay? That's white in there, so I may touch it up with a little bit of gray here and there, but. Ahí vamos otra vez with the little fine lines, especially along the edges here. And then you can extend these other guys. Go back over it, make it thicker where you want it. Leave some of the yellow showing if you want, you know. A little fibers. Uh, they got it's they're like hair like feathers, you know, all these little fluffs. Okay. Let's see, what else? What else can we do right now? I can drop a little bit of red on top of it. Looking at uh what I got right here. Uh, a little heavier. I'm looking at the at the base, you know. I'm just gonna make it a little bit stronger. Um, I see some reds coming through. Not sure how all of this lays, but I'm laying color in. Okay. Darker toward the bottom, certain, certain areas are darker. So I laid yellow, I laid orange, and now I'm laying red, okay? A little bit of red along this edge of the beak, just a little bit, okay? And uh, that takes care of that area. I cut, I went in on the eye with gray, okay? And you can see I did the feet with gray. I left the nails, I'm gonna do the nails with uh, black. Okay, I got the black. Uh, I want to I go ahead and put the black in here. And uh, looks like a dark blue. But remember, you follow the shape. Okay, uh, and then. I was looking at the branch. I'm gonna add a little sandy tan, okay? Uh, it's got some light areas. Uh, I don't have that color. And in a, in a way, a sandy tan kinda looks like that. You know, there's certain, certain light areas. Something's happening in there. I'm gonna probably, uh, probably do two or three tones, maybe four tones, I don't know. But sandy tan is definitely the, the light one first, okay? So I'm just kind of laying some colors in there. Uh, down here. Um, at some point, I'll come in with a, with a brown. Brown is much darker, harder, harsher. Uh, so I'm using the tip. And I kind of skip across because I want to add 
I want to add a little bit of texture, okay? Color, darker areas. You know, I'm just kind of looking at what's there and, and um, I'm just kind of moving back and forth on it, okay? Up in this area. Um, I'm thinking I can show you another little trick at some point. Okay. I'm going to leave some areas light. That bump. And then come down and it gets darker underneath here. Okay. But I'm going to work it a little bit. Uh, and then I'll, I'll show you what I have. Look at this area right now. See the blurring of it? The branch. I've got this, uh, this brush. It's a synthetic uh, fiber. It's a uh, synthetic fiber is a little stiffer than your sable or something like that. Okay. Hog bristle work pretty good, but a little bit of water. Just a little bit of water. Check this out. Just to kind of, just to kind of, <clears throat> let me see how I can do this. Soften the, well, the other one. Kind of spread the colors around a little bit. <clears throat> but you got to be careful because you can overdo it. You can overdo it very easy, okay? And that's all I'm going to do to it, okay? So this is it. <clears throat> what, I, what I tell people to do, when you, when you do something, you put your name. Down at the bottom. Let's see, where are we? 320. Okay. And that's it. That's good. You know, that's working with Crayola markers. Crayola markers are water soluble, uh, but you got to be careful. Okay. A lot of people get into it and they, they just do a little bit too much. Okay. They don't know when to back off, so sometimes I don't even tell people about this. Okay. Yeah. Just a penitas. Okay. And that's your your color. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.